Hello guys, this is Red from Red's Third Dimension Gaming, and today I'm reviewing Nobunaga's Ambition Sphere of Influence for the PlayStation 4. And please forgive me if I said that wrong. Being as old as Mario is one crazy thing in the video game universe. After spanning across 30 years since its original release in Japan, Nobunaga's Ambition returns with its latest entry, Nobunaga's Ambition Sphere of Influence. Coming into this game thinking it is going to be like any of the Dynasty or Samurai Warrior games is a mistake. Nobunaga's Ambition stands on its own as a real-time strategy game. The game incorporates the following three elements, creation, diplomacy, and war. Players must balance these elements as they try to unite Japan. There are many storylines that may play out for players in this game. The story depends on you, the player. Even though Nobunaga's ambition, sphere of influence, is based on Sengoku era from 15th to 16th century Japan, it offers 11 different scenarios to play through. Because of how many different clans and tribes there were across Japan, Uniting it will cause a player to spend hours upon hours playing the game. It is very lengthy. Spending just 10 hours is, doesn't even do this game justice. You're going to spend a lot of 10 hours straight playing this game. It is long. Nobunaga's ambition, sphere of influence, offers a lot of history, especially for players who choose the historical route. Whenever I play this style of games, I always come out of them with some everlasting knowledge. It is an experience that you should at least try once. That being said, I didn't feel the need to go back and play more after completing one of these scenarios. Before even starting any scenario, a player should first try out the edit mode. In this mode, you can either customize any historical officer or create a brand new officer who is unique to you. There are a good variety of customization tools available such as your character's face, birth, personality, and lifespan. Another feature in edit mode is who your birth parent is. I just decided to go with, trying to say this right, Nobuyasa Oda, since that was going to be one of the main characters I used during my scenario playthrough. Another mentionable quality about this mode is that you can edit all of the stats of your created characters so that you have an advantage on the difficult battlefield. While playing Nobunaga's ambition, sphere of influence, a player should be careful with every decision that he or she makes. If you decide to conspire against a clan or try to steal an opposing clan's officer, they might try to come at you in full force. There is always something to do while you are playing too. Never is there any downtime. Creation is one of the prime elements of this game for a reason. In order for your population and troop forces to grow, you need to make sure you enhance your harvestable crops. For your clan to grow and expand, you need gold. In order to get gold, you need to either sell crops or expand your crafts so that you earn more monthly money. Within the menu of decision making, you can expand and conquer using the following mini menus, and I will have a brief description about each one in my written review, so go check that out in the link below. Civil, Infrastructure, Posting, Foreign, Covert, Retainers, Investigate, Province, Deploy, Request, Directions, and Attack. These are all the different commands that a player can use to manage his or her clan. The gameplay elements add a lot of variety to the RTS style combat. The main problem I have with the gameplay is that it can be very hard or annoying throughout my time playing it. For example, the one clan kept bombarding me with troops. Over 10,000 in total. The first time I defeated him, it was fun. But spending another 10 hours or more on one clan doesn't seem to ever go away can make a person rip their hair out. So when I was finally able to destroy all the clan's troops that they sent to my castles, I had no troops or supplies left. Then I had to do this about 4-5 to five times after resupplying before I decided to stop playing for a very long time. I waited like a week before I even started touching this game again because it was really pissing me off. If you're playing a Nobunaga Ambition series game for the first time, then you're going to want to play it on easy or customize your own settings. You can change all the settings 
And this is a cool feature because you can set everything up so that your clan has an advantage in combat, growth, or anything else that your heart desires. This makes the game much more manageable and more fun. The battlefield gameplay makes Nobunaga's ambition, sphere of influence, much more enjoyable, but is not required. Once you are engaged in battle, a player can simply click on the option to join and they are transferred to an over-the-top tactic style fighting system. In this fighting mechanic, players can attack a unit head-on, from two sides, or any other way he or she chooses. The fighting is completely based on your own fighting style and completely up to the player. Even when fighting big units that have three times as many troops can be defeated by tactical gameplay and special abilities. Each and every character has abilities that can be used throughout the battle to gain an upper hand. For instance, a player may use an ability that makes the front enemy unit attack the back enemy unit. And this is really useful because like if they're a really tough opponent, you can make that front unit that has so many troops just go and start attacking the back unit. That is a really useful attack. There are a lot of abilities to explore and earn. A player will grow and learn new abilities the more that he or she fights, creates, and negotiates. The graphical aspect of the game is beautiful when outside of the battlefield, but the game could use tinkering to make it really pop. However, when engaged in close quarter battle, Nobunaga's ambition, sphere of influence, looks dated and not as interesting. Also, I have never had a problem with frame rate or performance issues with the PS4 version of the game. Overall, Nobunaga's ambition sphere of influence is fun upon your first time playing, but grows frequently less interesting the more you have to battle the same clan over and over and over. Trust me, it will happen. The gameplay has a lot of depth and some of the best tactical mechanics I've seen among other RTS style games in the genre. The graphics could use improvement and players will find out a little bit about Japan's history, which makes the game a great learning experience. I give this game a 7 out of 10. It is for players that are interested in a good RTS game and for an extra challenge, play the game on the hardest difficulty or just play it on normal. Normal and medium difficulty are hard enough. If you'd like to buy the game and also help support my channel, you can use the Amazon link below. Also, for the full written review, go to my blog website down below, and you can see everything in written detail and more. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe for more. If you'd like me to upload a walkthrough gameplay series for this game, comment below, because I'd have to re-record and just play the game from scratch again but with better settings so that it's easier. Thank you guys for watching. See you.